in the previous part we have studied adaptations of organisms in relation to external factors like water and temperature during this lecture we will discuss adaptations of organisms in further detail as we have seen in the previous lecture animals and plants are adapted to the conditions of the habitats in which they live the term adaptation describes the characteristic of living forms to develop over a period of time certain special structural and functional features which enable them to survive and reproduce within the limits of a particular environment adaptation is considered as a process rather than a physical part of the body it is the evolutionary process that results from natural selection whereby an organism becomes better fitted to the life and multiply in its habitat all adaptations help organisms to survive in their ecological niches now let us get more information about the external factors to which living organisms show their adaptations the most important external environmental factors to which organisms are adapted include soil some organisms are adapted to live entirely in soil lull in 1952 classified structural adaptations into different types based on the external factor soil which include cursorial adaptation cursorial animals show adaptations for living over the hard surface of the earth fossorial adaptation fossorial adaptations include fossorial animal which exhibit profound adaptations for living beneath the surface of the earth scansorial or arboreal adaptation the organisms have chosen to lead life above the surface of the earth onto the trees and become adapted accordingly in this lecture we will concentrate on the adaptations of the soil organisms only the ground dwelling animals which may be cursorial that is running such as ostrich re wolves cats bears hyenas etc solitary that is jumping such as rodents rabbits kangaroos etc gravy portal that is heavy such as turtles elephants hippopotamus etc exhibit different kind of adaptations for different kinds of soils for example if the soil is firm and hard the large animals inhabiting the ecosystem tend to have small hooves or paws if the soil is wet and spongy they tend to have broad hooves or paws let us first discuss the cursorial adaptations of soil animals in detail these animals show different modifications for speed attainment and getting the food let's understand them one by one modifications for attaining speed cursorial adaptation signifies the modifications for attaining speed on hard surface of the earth these adaptations have been manifested in a variety of ways the main aim is to offer least resistance in the attainment of speed which in turn includes number of modifications modifications of contour of the body the animals are devoid of extra projections which may offer least resistance in attaining speed in the medium through which they move the body of cursorial animal is streamlined and spindle shaped the body of horse portrays the same modifications modifications of locomotor organs in cursorial adaptation forms the limbs and the main propelling organs which show great modifications for speed of the limbs the hind limbs show greater modifications than the fore limbs attainment of digitigrades condition in cursorial animals the digitigrades condition becomes more preferred the speediest representatives are digitigrades in nature highest perfection is reached in ungulates where special sole pads in the form of hoops are developed 
at the digital tips to absorb shock and to reduce mechanical friction during fast movement on the hard surface. Elongation of limbs The phenomena of lengthening of the limbs seems to be the important step towards the attainment of speed. The long bones are conservative but the digits together with the carpals or tarsus become very much elongated. The bones of the sole and palm become fused together which increase the length of the limbs. Such fusion of small bones reduces the friction between small bony pieces during locomotion. Reduction of number of digits With the attainment of digitigrade condition, there is always a reduction in number of digits. In horses, limbs have only one digit. Reduction of ulna and fibula In horses, the fibula is reduced to a small vestige. Restriction of movement in one plane The articulation of bones prevents universal movement but permits movement in one plane only which in turn helps in increasing locomotory power. Attainment of bipedality Human feet have adapted for bipedal movement. Bipedality involves better development of hind limbs and reduction of forelimbs. Maintenance of balance In bipedal animals, maintenance of equilibrium is essential. In semi-erect bipedal animals like kangaroos, the tail helps to counterpoise the body. Reduction in the length of neck In bipedal animals, there is always a tendency towards the shortening of the neck to bring the head near to the shoulder. Modifications for foot getting The lengthening of the limbs in cursorial animals takes the head sufficiently away from the ground. So, to get food and drink, the neck and the skull becomes elongated. Now, let us get the information about fossorial adaptation as the second type of adaptation observed in soil animals. Animals which are well adapted for digging the burrows and for subterranean mode of life are called fossorial animals. These animals may dig either for their food or simply for retreat. Zoologically, they are primitive, defenseless and unambitious animals. They possess different adaptation. Fossorial adaptations show different gradations and as a consequence different degrees of structural modifications are encountered to tunnel the soil. The body contour is either cylindrical, for example ichthyophis, limbless lizards, snakes, earthworms, etc. or spindle shaped or fusiform, for example talpa, echidna, etc. so as to offer least resistance to subterranean passage. The head tapers anteriorly to form a short of snout for burrowing. The tail is short or vestigial. The eyes tend to become vestigial as they are of no use in dark habitat. Complete subterranean life causes total visual reduction. The external ears also tend to disappear since they would be obstructing in burrowing. Fossorial animals possess snout, teeth and forelimbs as a very powerful and efficient digging apparatus. Snout and teeth act as a very important digging machines in swine. In the insect Grylotulpa, the forelimbs are modified for digging purpose. The forelimbs become not only short and strongly built, but also they become very much broadened. Powerful shoulder is an asset for fossorial arms because it has to withstand great pressure during digging. The greatest diameter of the body lies near shoulder. In fossorial animals, the hind limbs acts as a driver. 
they perform the function of pushing the animal forward during digging. Fossorial animals also show modification of vertebral column. Several cervical vertebrae become either more elongated or show fusion which helps in digging process. Now as a third type, let us see how scansorial animals possess arboreal adaptations to adapt themselves to the external factor soil. Arboreal life is sought for safety, retreat and easy procurement of food. The scansorial animals furnish gradation of specializations. The first category includes the animals that are usually rock and wall climbers like wall lizards. The second category comprises of many insectivores, rodents and carnivores which can climb the trees very easily as well as they are quite at home on the ground. They actually lead double life in trees and on land. The third category includes the animals that are fully arboreal and make the trees their home and may in rare occasion descend to the ground. These forms have undergone greatest modifications for living on trees. These animals exhibit different modes of progression like progression on the upper surface of the trees by the help of fore and hind limbs. The slots are the typical examples. In term of adaptations, these organisms possess large recurved and powerful claws by which they can remain suspended from branches on the tree. Progression by swinging by forelimbs is observed only in primates. They can move with speed and accuracy by the forelimbs from tree to tree. They show modification of body architecture for climbing. The chest along with ribs and the shoulders and pelvic region are very strongly built. Ribs are extremely curved. They also possess modifications of locomotor organs and tail. In most arboreal forms like chameleon, monkey, etc., the tail is prehensile. Thus, we can say that in nature, there are many animals that possess specific adaptive characteristics which allow them to survive in extreme situations. Let us quickly get the overview of adaptations that we have learnt today. In this part of lecture, we have mainly focused on the cursorial, fossorial and scansorial adaptations of the living organisms in relation to external factor soil. And in detail, we have also discussed modifications for speed attainment and modifications for getting the food. Thus, we can significantly say that adaptation is an evolutionary process rather than a physical part of the body.